Prisoners of the Ghostland seems on paper to be filling up a checklist that I didn't even know existed. I mean, you've got Nicolas Cage in full cage mode. Wandering around a Mad Max style dystopia. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Which is full of samurai, Wild West style gangs, some slightly supernatural elements, and your usual Fallout nutters who decided that the apocalypse was the time to start gluing every single bit of metal to their bodies and speak through the finest synthesizers that the 80s can offer. Oh, and did I mention that people have a habit of breaking into song? Oh, great. More singing right on time. Not in a musical kind of way, more in a sort of singing along when someone starts going. You've also got a director in Sion Sono who's got a reputation for making uh, interesting films that you shouldn't really watch with your mother slash kids if you catch my drift. But my big question is, why is a film with all of this going for it so boring? I mean, this world shouldn't be boring. It should be a blast in the way that 2015's Turbo Kid was, nor, nor any of a countless number of films of this genre, both high and mostly low budget, because this is a popular genre when your budget's not that high, because all you need is a couple of old cars, a few muddy extras, a couple of crossbows and guns, as well as maybe a fight choreographer if you're feeling fancy. But one thing you cannot do is let the pacing drag. Films like this need to be quick. The plot is generally simpler, usually evil corporation or government has lost a MacGuffin in a part of the wilderness they'd rather not go, someone who doesn't want to go gets blackmailed or promise something if they get the MacGuffin, and off we go. Well, and that is the basic plot here, which is fine because you don't watch films of this type for the plot, you watch it for the world, the people, the action scenes, hopefully without a naff comic relief character getting dragged along for the ride. This film also introduces a ticking clock mechanic in the, in the form of an explosive suit, which has explosives in his neck for when the timer runs out, explosives in the arms for if he gets violent with the MacGuffin, and explosives next to his um, vegetables if he gets frisky with the MacGuffin, and utterly and completely wasted Sophie Butella, Kingsman, The Mummy, Atomic Blonde, which does lead to this film's one memorable moment, but it was way, 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 way too late by that point. I mean, within 15 minutes, my wife had decided that she was watching art and was engrossed in next week's shopping list. I was just confused, because generally speaking, this was a gorgeous looking film, with some interesting ideas in its world, but its pacing dragged, and when there was an action scene, it was over before it even started, which just seems to defeat the point of films like this. Which is a shame, because like I keep saying, the ingredients for an awesomely trashy film are there. I mean, our main villain has his own samurai bodyguard for crying out loud. There are so many interesting little ideas that add up to an interesting world that I wanted to spend time in. I mean, there's a cult dedicated to stopping a clock from ticking because that's stopping time, and if time starts again, more explosions will come. I mean, you could have just smashed up the mechanism, but I guess there's not a lot to do off the apocalypse, and that's a great little detail. Or you have people that are so traumatised they literally cover themselves in mannequin parts and act like mannequins. So many awesome little details that you can tell this world was important to the director, but there was nothing holding it together. Because all the characters are one note. Like I said, the plot's basically an irrelevance, and the pacing is more suited to an art house film than a genre that is normally pretty fast paced. Also, some of the scenes just look cheap. There's no other way to describe it, which is... Weird, because in one scene it's gorgeous and glossy and I'm stroking my chin and looking for my monocle and then 20 minutes later it's very clear that the budget had run out and they still had a few scenes left to shoot so they just went for it and I'm back in my student filmmaking days. Acting, not directing, all evidence, sadly um, lost to time. And leaving aside the tonal whiplash, this is just a boring film. Even Cage only cages out once or twice and the rest of the time he's trying but just isn't quite there. It's got interesting ideas and moments, but what this reminded me of is an old, probably fourth story about a Michelin-starred chef who decided that he could make McDonald's secret sauce through taste alone because it was so cheap to make and he was so talented. He failed miserably because he just couldn't get it quite right, and that's what this film feels like. It's got all the right ingredients, but it can't quite stick the landing. It needed to be faster paced, develop its characters more, have some more action scenes, and find something to do with its leading lady, or replace her with a wet blanket, and lean a little more into its weirdness. I mean, it's a shame, but I've seen worse in this genre. I've seen a lot better as well. So if nothing else is on, check this film out. But otherwise, what did you guys think below? Let me know. I'm Daniel, it's been a donkey. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.